Rear can bearing as supplied from the ven vendors is just a bronze or a brass composition material. And as far as I know, the original Fords had an oil groove in it and had a notch in it. And the notch goes to the top of the engine, so as the oil washes down off the flywheel, it'd run into the notch and then get in the groove and lubricate the rear cam bearing. So I go ahead and I, I cut a notch in it, and then I'll take a file and cut that groove in. So all I'm going to do is just come up here on the corner of my grinding wheel. Just going to grind a little notch in it. That's step one. Well, that looks pretty uniform. So we'll go ahead and install this in the block and then I'll cut this uh, groove in it. All right, so we yesterday we coated the block with Gliptol. In the Gliptol, I don't tape these things off. It washes out real quick with a little carburetor cleaner and a rag. So I spent a few minutes here just wiping out these surfaces where the cam bearings are going to go and kind of cleaned up the overspray and stuff that I had on the mains. So we're ready to do this. The little notch V that I cut in it, it's going to go to the top of the motor. So the oil washes off that's slung up and gets down in there. So I'm just going to eyeball that into the top side get our hammer here and I'm going to drive that bushing in to where it's flush on the inside of the block don't want to get it much deep and then I just come in here with a four corner file and line up on my little notch that I cut and I just start slowly cutting that thing across to where I get a track. Oh, I'm not removing a whole lot. Just enough to give them a, a way for the oil to track across that cam bearing. So we're done. That's it. That's how you. That's how I put the rear Copy cam bearing. Of something that maybe K.R. Wilson made. So I don't know just the, uh, how authentic it is, but it works. It works out for me. All that I have is a shell mill end cutter. Uh, our new camshafts are three quarters of an inch. This is a three quarter inch shell cutter. It's held on with a screw, a pin to keep it from rotating on the end of the shaft. And then a couple of bearing surfaces here that when I slide this in, they fit the uh, or the, the, the pockets uh, where the cam bearing goes. And I just slide an old cam bearing on here so I don't bang that cutter. But this just slips up in. And after I get it past the cutter, And it just slides in and the cam, the reamer makes contact with that bushing back there that we installed. I'm just going to rotate this thing around and it just dresses out that rear cam bearing. There's not a whole lot of material as you can see that removes. Just make sure that my tool cutter comes all the way out. And then I just back it out of there. What doing this, um, if you don't ream it, you can get it in there. You can work on that with a reamer back there or however you want, but the cam will kind of bind. It just, it's not in alignment. And so this reamer gets it to where when we install this cam, with a little bit of effort, we can turn that cam gear and cam with one finger, okay, and doesn't have a whole lot cam of bearings. We're gonna install our cam bearings onto our cam and make sure prior we reamed out the rear cam bearing. And either it's the luck of the draw or what, but I have I have all kinds of troubles 
getting cam bearings that are round. As you can see, that one you'd have to literally drive in to get, and the center one won't even begin to start. I mean, it just barely gets started. And what it is, and we'll move over here to another bench and I'll show it better, but what happens is, is this bearing's out around. And typically, they're larger diameter through this direction than they are this direction. And I think what happens is, is when they make this bearing, it's a shell and it's one piece and they pour it and line board for size and then they use some kind of a parting tool to break that shell in half and when they do that I believe the impact spreads it out horizontally because they've split it vertically and both of them are the same so what do you do well some people we know will take the bearing and go over to their uh, belt sander and start sanding off and come and fit and sand off and come and fit until it'll slide in there. You know, when they've done that, it actually isn't, it's actually a little loose in, in the block and uh, would cause probably no significant problems. People's done it that way forever. But I built a, a, a fixture, a press, uh, to straighten these up. And it's something that's easily done. And that's how I do it. And so I'm going to demonstrate that rather than sanding this down. Also, when I press on this thing, uh, and when they've broke it apart, this is really no longer around. And we're going to put a new stipe cam in it, and I know what the bearing uh, journal sizes are on it. And I have a reamer that's just a standard three-quarter inch reamer that will true that hole up and clean it up and make it back to right. So because of what I think is the way that they part them things, the dimension right angles to the parting, uh, we got about 374 there, and if I roll it, that one isn't too bad. I got 372. And I'll come to this end and just check it. Uh, 375 and 373. And remember this would somewhat go in, but it would stop right about right about there, right in front of the little Babbitt anchor. And our center bearings worse. If I measure it, it's 376 to 371 and 373, oops, might not have been a very good read there, 373 to 371. So they're egg shaped for lack of a better term. So what I did was I made a little press. And this is bored out to the size of what that cam bearing should fit in. And I thought I could just simply drop that down in there and put it together and go to the press and press it. But I found that while I probably made it round, it springs back. So I've got some shims, different thicknesses of shims. And generally, I'll end up with one or two in there. So when I press down, I'm actually pushing it a little beyond where it needs to be, and then it'll spring back. And I'll we'll we'll go to a press here and do that. So first thing is is we want to make them round, and then we'll clean up. Uh, the ID of the bearing surface to where it fits the cam perfect and another thing that we have to do is fit the cam bearing thrust on the front and the cam bearings are made a little long in other words it will not go on 
on without the cam lobe interfering. So these have to be cut down to size. I do that in a in a lathe, but you could put the bearing together. Oops. And since that's broke, it's got a definite way that it would go in. You could go to the belt, a uh, belt sander or a grinder, and if you measured and 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 know what your uh, final measurement is, you could grind it down and just keep checking it and try to take it off uniform to where you're, you know, close to took off the same amount. If you've missed it a little bit, and a little bit being a thou, maybe you could you could it, it would be acceptable. But I. I usually throw these up in the lathe and cut them to lathe. So what we're going to do here is, again, I already know that the high is uh, 90 degrees to the parting line. So I'm going to lay me down a shim because I know I'm going to have to use a shim. And just set that up to where the parting lines at the parting of the little press fixture that I made. Get our dial indicators here and see if we, okay, we're now 371. And look at that, we're 370, 371. like um, 375 and 372 so I'll put it back in there and press it again and I'm going to stick another shim in it Three seventy one, three seventy one, two. Three seventy, three seventy one, three seventy two. So I'm gonna take this back up to our engine to our front front slide slide bearing, which was really tight going in just a reason just a little bit. Now Slides right on in, plumb through it. So I'm happy with the fit of that. So we'll go do the center one now and do the same thing and then we'll ream the Babbitt out to where it'll fit on the crank. Jim just first off. And there is a difference in the, in the uh, diameter of those bearings. Uh, I think there's a, thous, a thousandth difference between the more the front one is open by a thousand com thousands compared to the rear one and I think that's done so you can slide the center bearing through the first uh, first bore we're three seventy all the way around there. We've pressed it and it's still not going in really happy. And so what's happened here, oh, there it goes. Well, there it goes. What, okay, and I'll, I'll show it, but what's happened here, and I don't know if it shows up on the camera, but remember we were uh, out around this way and so I pressed it. Well, when I pressed it, I probably had just a little too thick a shim in it. And now it's 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 grabbing on the uh, bore in the block right there. So it tells me I pushed it just a little too far, and it's a little wider now through here. It's a little 
a little bigger OD through here than, than it is here. But it does go in and it's really, really close. It's a good snug fit. I think I'll go back to the press and just put it back together and put it where the party line is straight up and down and give it just a little shove and see if it'll slip in better. slides in it's nice and snug so I'm happy and so let's straighten up the uh, straighten up the uh, ID of the bearing three-quarter inch spiral fluted reamer get the bearing make sure that you get it up and I don't know if it shows up on the camera but you can see it's supposed to be three-quarter inch it was before but now it no longer is because we've pushed and shoved on it. So make sure that you get it started, uh, that you get it seated, the two halves together. And I put a hose clamp at the bottom and one at the top. Oops, did I lose it? Yeah, kinda. I'm just down snug to start with. Hose clamp up here at the top. Then we board board it all out so that now will fit on our camshaft as far as the ID of the camshaft or OD and ID of the bearing to the camshaft we still have to fit it to the thrust on the front and here's what we're starting with on the center one and it's the same thing There's our bearing surfaces. So this is the middle, the, the center cam bearing is ready to go on. But we got to do some work here on the front one. So let's go get that a 